I'm going to be putting on my makeup, which I have a big surprise at the end where I share with you my vision board that I created in 2013, applying makeup, which I will be doing. Appearance is so important if you want people to take you seriously. What you look like, what you drive, where you live, that's what people use to ascertain how they engage with you. If we choose it, we're dead for hungry. But I had to zoom in on how I presented myself. Or the lashes are almost touching the forehead. The bird up look not keep again. It don't have to wear makeup to look good. That when I look good, I feel good. <laughs> how I create brows that look a little bit more full. I'm from an era where people shaved out their eyebrows and just draw two lines. Those were simple days. Don't I miss them? But now full brows are in, so it takes a little bit more effort. So I use a brusher brow, and this one is by, let's see who, this is very old. I've had this for at least four years, so you can't even see. Oh, it's by Black Opal. This is one of getting full eyebrows. So that's the first step and it's a little bit brighter. Now I want to get it to have the shape that I'm looking for. The next step is I use this pencil and this pencil is NYC and I'll tag it below. And I use this pencil to basically define my brows. And I've learned my girlfriend who is a makeup guru she says do strokes make short strokes so that's what i'll be doing to try to get it defined and this will help with shaping it as well right so now i'm making short strokes like that and i'm expanding my brow as i do that now my brows are i'd say they're defined now and this is the icing on the cake for me that gives me somewhat of a natural look. I use this product to give me lines like strokes and I'll link it below. And those who do microblading, this is what this product is trying to imitate because it has the three strokes and I'll show you it when I take up the actual product. But why I like this is it actually draws lines in my brows and it's also waterproof. So if I'm going to get wet for whatever reason or I'm going to sweat a lot, it doesn't move. Strokes and it applies, it feels wet because it's more like a marker. And when it dries, it gets much brighter. So be modest in your application of it. Because like I said earlier, you don't want your brows to distract who you're talking to. So probably what you can do is apply one coat and then allow it to dry so you see the level of brightness before applying a second coat. I'm used to it, so I know enough of what works, but I also use it near to the edge so I can get actual lines there. And I don't think you can see it from the camera, but it blends it in naturally and it doesn't look like my brows just start out of nowhere. Like it, it looks more natural. So I apply it to the edge as well for that reason. Now we're going to move on to contouring the brows. And these are things I learned recently. You can tell us I'm excited, not true. So I'm going to contour the brows. Now, this is everyday makeup. I know they have stuff to do with this, but this product is my favorite. It's a MAC. I'm going to call it a gloss, for want of a better word, because I really don't know what it is. But I use it on so many different parts of my face for so many different purposes. So this is a MAC product. Let me see if I can see what's written here. Oh, it says blush. But absolutely love it. So instead of all the different things that people use to contour their brows, I just use this. I just use this, and I use this brush, and I do this. And I do it below and I blend it in and I do it at the top and it has like glitter in it. 
So it gives you a nice finished look. And that's the story. I apply it to both. Again, this is something I've seen dramatized on some faces, not in recent interviews, but in the past, where the line below your brow is so light in color that it, it makes your brows pop, but there's something called over popping. And again, if you're in entertainment, that's absolutely great because it trends there. But if you are not, if you're in a professional environment, especially, just be discreet with applying it. So now that the brows are done, you know, most people would put on their eyeshadow. But let me tell you why I do mine last, because sometimes I just don't have the time to finish doing my makeup. Wherever it mag, it pop, as we say in Jamaica. At whatever point I get to, I may just have to leave and go on with my day. So I try to apply the basic things, which mostly what I wear is the base, brows, eyeliner, and lip gloss. That's it. So if I need to run, then I go. So I usually put on my eyeshadow later on, which again, I'm no expert, but it works for me. The eyeliner of choice for me is Marc Jacobs. And I like Marc Jacobs because it goes on heavy. So I don't have to be there pressuring my eye to get the line bright enough. A stroke of this is enough. I also use this Revlon. And this one, I believe, is a color stay. And I use this one if I know I'm going to a funeral and I'm going to cry, for example. Or I'm going to sweat a lot because it does not budge. This one doesn't budge either. The Marc Jacobs doesn't budge. But this one has a little bit longer stay. But this is my favorite of all times. And especially if you're putting a line above your eye, this one is ideal. You come back and tell me in the comments below what you think after you have tried this Marc Jacobs eyeliner. You usually can't get it wrong with your eyeliner, quite frankly. So I really don't have any tips as it pertains to appearance where that is concerned. So, so again, I apply it and it goes on really heavy. I'm hoping you can see that on the close-up camera here. You don't need to rub it in too much to get the look that I want. And I don't apply my eyeliner on the skin below my eye, and that's very deliberate. I actually apply it just below my iris, but it's still almost like inside my eye. So I normally apply it on the lower lid as well as at the top. And if I have time, sometimes I'll put it above the top, but I don't have that time right now because it's just everyday makeup. We don't have to go all the way. So there's really no wrong or right way to put on your eyeliner. I think most people get that right. So the next step is to apply a lip liner. And you, this is not one where most people get wrong, but I can tell you that you can get it wrong. And I've seen people, because they want fuller lips, they draw lines where lips don't exist. Just be moderate in your approach, because again, you don't want your lip line to distract from the seriousness of your conversation. So be mindful of that. I like my lips the way they are. So I draw the line along my natural lip line and I use a like a red color for this, but then I use a darker color afterwards to give it more de definition. So, so that's the first line, which is a little bit red. The second line is now a darker pencil, as you can see. And this gives it some amount of definition, or so I think. What the heck? Now, I've had my makeup done professionally only three times in my entire life. I absolutely love the look when it happens. In one case, though, I didn't quite look like myself, but that was many years ago, and I chose to use a different makeup artist. So I really love the look, but I just don't have the time and it can be expensive. The money can add up. But if you want that look, it's important to get it. Invest in getting your makeup done properly by a professional. This, so this is another product that I've been using for probably at least 15 years. It's the L'Oreal Infallible and it does not move. Remember, I don't take makeup on the road with me. So whatever I put on, I like that it doesn't move. And especially beneath the mask. If you use the gloss, a little may come off on the mask, but it will still be preserved. But if you don't, because you're going for a matte look, then you can wear your mask. And when you take it off, it still looks good. So this product has both a lip gloss and uh, like a gloss to put over it. 
And I don't wear lipsticks because usually they crack up my lips and sometimes to the point where they're bleeding. I think they're just a little bit too heavy. So I stick with the lip gloss and this one is great. So this is what it looks like outside of package and I'm going to link it below. So then I'm applying the L'Oreal lip gloss. And it's very neutral in color. So that you have a kind of natural look overall on your face. And then I use my finger to blend it in a little bit. And of course, again, I'm not great at this. So I applied too much right there. Now I need to fix it with the dark liner. Give it a little bit of definition. There we go. Looks a little bit better. And now we just apply the gloss because I like it when it looks shiny. Instead of the matte look. There we go. That's it. Lips are done. So the last thing that I do for everyday makeup is at this stage, I will apply a mascara. And if I'm going to cry, like I'm going to a funeral or I think I'm going to cry, or I'm going to sweat a lot if I'm going to go into a hot place, which I've been going in hot places recently because we have a huge surprise that's coming for Goffa. Stay tuned. And because of that, I've been in environments where I'm sweating quite a bit. So I sometimes use a waterproof mascara, but right now I'm using a MAC mascara. And I also use a Givenchy, which is the one when I want that waterproof look. So I'm going to apply the MAC today. It has very thin, I don't know what you call these, but you get the gist. So it goes in and isolates my lashes very nicely. Now, this is one area where I've seen people completely mess up when it comes to being in a professional setting. Whether you use the lash strip or you use, you do fusion lash, which right now for this video, I am wearing fusion lash and they're done by Manny and I'll put his Instagram link and everything below, but it's basically where they attach lashes to your natural lashes. I have tried the strip and failed miserably. And I don't want to have to put on my eyelash every day and take it off when I come home at night. So the fusion lash, it works best for me because you put it on and you leave it. And for two to three weeks, you don't have to touch it up or do anything. And whenever it strips and falls off, your natural lashes are back there looking very healthy and you can put a little mascara on them and get a nice look or you can keep using the fusion lash because it, it does not hurt your lashes or at least that's been my experience with Manny. I'm just applying to the lower lashes where those are my natural lashes. Nothing is on those. And I'm just giving it a little bit of length. And sometimes, depending on how dramatic I want it to be, I'll attach a little bit. I'll apply a little bit to the top lashes, but not too much, right? So that's it for lashes. Now let's talk about the do's and don'ts of lashes. Now, when you're going to a job interview, talking to a potential investor, or trying to attract customers for your business, your lashes can't touch your forehead. And I know I'm exaggerating, but I know you also get the gist of what I'm trying to say. I've seen lashes that are so, I'm going to use the word aggressive because that's how it looks, that it distracts completely from the interview that I'm having with the candidate or the conversation I'm having with the individual. And sometimes I can tell that they can't really see me clearly. So them kind of you know, looking through the side of them eye and trying all kind of maneuver. It's not necessary, especially again, if you're going into an environment where you want people to take you seriously, be moderate and modest with your approach as it pertains to applying the lash. If you're in inter entertainment, reach the headband for all I care. But if you're going into a professional environment, make sure it does not distract from the conversation you're having. And more importantly, make sure to stop you from seeing who is talking to you because it will impede your ability to make eye contact which is important in interviews so now i would just leave and go on the road so this is my typical 
daily look if I'm just running on the road to run errands or for a meeting or doing interviews or anything like that. But I'm going to take it a little bit extra in order to help you understand a little bit more as it pertains to appearance. I'm going to apply some eyeshadow. And I told you earlier that you must be discreet and not have the Berger paint look on your face where you have all these different colors. They're not coordinated and they are just distracting from what it is that you're doing or saying. So I have this palette. It's LA colors and I think it was very inexpensive. It's literally 10 years old, right? And I've been using it to not just apply shadows, but it's also what I use for my blush. Expert, but guess what? It works, which is what matters. So now I'm going to use it to apply the eyeshadow because I'm wearing red. So I want a little red look, but I'm going to be very discreet. This is what the palette looks like. And it has a variety of colors, but all earth tones, and uh, which means it's good for daytime makeup. So I'm going to apply this first. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to give my eyes a little bit of depth. So I'm going to apply this one moderately and I'm going to apply it just above. And this is why it's good to do it before you fix up your lash and all of that. But today you understand why I'm doing it this way. So you're going to apply it just above the eye and above the lash area. And I'm not putting it on too heavy but just heavy enough for it to give me a nice look of depth, depth that is when you look on my eyes. That's it. I need to fix up back the lashes in case I move any other place. Let's get them back up there. And then I put a little in the corner of my eye right here. Carry it across, not too much. Because I remember or focus here a discreet appearance that does not distract from our conversation or our engagement with others. So we need to keep that in mind when we are applying the eyeshadow. And if it's an interview, I do recommend you wear earth tones only because that way you are guaranteed not to do it in excess. So that's the look. Now I'm going to take my little red because I'm not going to an interview today. So I'm going to pop it a little bit with the red from my 10 or 15 year old palette. And I'm just going to apply it to the top up here. So we get a little red going on to kind of pop the eyes. And remember, I'm no expert. So you see me being a little bit rough and, you know, just, just doing my thing. It's because it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just applying it freely and following the natural lines on my face. And then I just blend it in with a slightly bigger brush to give it a more natural look. So now let's go to our cheeks. And I have high cheekbones, but I still like to put a little pop on them. So I'm going to use this brush. And you remember my palette? I'm going to use this red one. And I'm just going to kind of do a little smile so they pronounce themselves a little bit more and then I'll apply a little blush on my cheeks here. So now my cheeks are popping. So now I'm going to apply, you remember I told you I use this everything, you underestimated its potential, but this MAC product is a one-stop shop for my appearance, right? So now I take this larger brush and I apply it above the blush to give me a glossy look. So you can see it already in the camera and I take it a little bit beyond my, my cheeks and then I blend that in so I get that nice glossy look on so my So that's it for the blush. And now we're going to move contouring and this is Odetta's contouring because this don't look like anything that the professional makeup artist use. and I take the darkest shade in the palette and I apply it I do I button my lips so I can see kind of where my cheeks line up and I apply a, a line to define my face a bit so here goes <laughs> And then, like anything else, we need to blend it in. 
And then I also, this is my version of contouring. If I wanted to have like a more lean look, I just take the same color powder or you can go a shade lighter if you choose to. And then I go and apply it around the, basically the shape of my face. So if it darkens beneath my chin area, then it, my, chi, my, my jawline will look more prominent. That's kind of, this is what I think the people who do the contouring and so on, that, that this is what I think they're trying to achieve. But this is my version of it. I don't know how to put in the multiple layers and all of that, but this works. So if you want to take it this far, like I do this if I'm going out at night uh, or if I'm going on TV or if I'm going to do a video, I will do this because I see that it makes a difference with the lighting. So again, you blend that in and call it George. I also like to brighten up my forehead. And yes, as I told you in the book, they used to call me forehead almighty in school because of the size I'm a forehead. But when you have learned to make peace with all your differences, because they're not imperfections, nor are they flaws. There's, there's just different. So my forehead bigger than yours, it's just a difference. When you have made peace with your differences and you become comfortable with who you are. Now, they used to call me forehead almighty. And now I'm applying gloss on my forehead to make my forehead even bigger. Can you imagine? one extreme to the next right and that's what accepting who you are and becoming comfortable in your skin and you may be thinking she's not comfortable in her skin because she applying makeup no two different things i know what makeup can do and i like the look it gives me it doesn't mean i'm not and i'm not perfect don't get me wrong i'm still developing as it pertains to self-love and all of that so let me put that out there but i definitely don't worry about my forehead being too big anymore, which is something that concerned me when I was in high school. So that's my makeup look. And like I said, the video doesn't show you everything that I've done, but I'll take a photograph so you can see the before and after look. But that's not the focus of the video. So let's jump back to what we're talking about.